When archaeologists began excavating old Viking settlements in Iceland and Greenland, they expected to find primitive shelters barely capable of surviving Arctic winters. Instead, they uncovered a mystery that challenged everything they believed about ancient engineering. These homes, some over a thousand years old, had stood through storms, shifting permafrost, blizzards, and constant winds. Yet the walls were intact. The interiors were dry. The structures hadn't collapsed under snow loads. And most confusing of all, the architectural features inside these ruins didn't match anything known in European building traditions. Hidden between stacked turf blocks and stones were thin, deliberate gaps. Quiet channels that weren't random cracks or decay, but something purpose-built. No one could figure out why they existed or how they worked. Decades later, in the early 1900s, Scandinavian engineers attempted to rebuild similar homes while establishing outposts in the Arctic. They copied what they thought were the essential Viking methods: thick turf walls, heavy roofs, simple layouts. But their copies failed to perform anywhere near the originals. The new homes became damp, cold, and prone to mold. Meanwhile, the ancient ones had been warm, dry, and perfectly balanced. The modern engineers were left scratching their heads. How could people living over a millennium ago create a building system that worked better than their own, with no written plans and no scientific textbooks? What secret were the Vikings using that modern builders had overlooked? The answer began to appear once researchers looked at the walls under controlled study. They realized that the Vikings weren't simply building thick walls; they were creating a system, a carefully calculated network of tiny ventilation channels hidden between layers of turf. These channels allowed warm air from the central fire to rise into the walls, creating a natural convection loop. As warm air moved upward, cooler air was pulled inward from outside at a gentle rate. Not a draft, not a wind tunnel, but a soft, controlled exchange that kept humidity in check and maintained a consistent indoor temperature. This subtle airflow, almost silent and invisible, was the core of the Viking heating secret. In modern terms, this system would be called passive thermal convection, and it's something most 20th-century homes fail at entirely. Instead of sealing homes shut and relying on mechanical systems to force air movement, the Vikings designed structures that breathed naturally. And because their airflow was slow and balanced, it prevented condensation, a major problem in cold climates. Most European shelters brought to the Arctic rotted within years because trapped moisture led to mold and structural failure. Viking homes avoided this entirely through a natural balancing of warm and cool air inside the walls themselves. Their houses weren't just insulated; they were alive with movement. The foundation also played a crucial role. The Vikings built their homes on deep stone bases, not just to lift them above the wet ground, but to create what we would now call a thermal mass battery. Stones heated by the central fire during the day slowly released warmth through the night. This meant even when the fire burned down to glowing coals, the house did not experience sudden temperature drops. Modern engineers who reconstructed these homes found something astonishing: even with outside temperatures falling below minus 25 degrees Celsius, the interior of a properly built turf house. Could remain at a stable a y minus 19 degrees Celsius using minimal fuel. This wasn't luck; it was engineering. The turf layers themselves were far more complex than they appeared. Vikings cut the turf in rectangular blocks with the grass still attached. These blocks were full of microscopic air pockets between roots, soil, and plant fibers, layered in alternating directions. The turf acted as both insulation and a flexible support system that could shift with freezing ground. Every few layers, the builders inserted thin mats of dried seaweed or straw. These weren't random fillers; they were essential components that created horizontal airflow pathways. Together, the vertical convection channels and the horizontal mats formed an internal breathing grid throughout the walls. Above all, this sat one of the most efficient roofing systems in ancient history. A Viking roof was heavy, low, and gently curved. 
It wasn't designed for decoration. That weight created thermal inertia, keeping warmth from escaping too quickly. Moss and turf laid over the roof acted like natural insulation mats, absorbing sound and holding warmth. Combined with the controlled airflow inside the walls, the roof created a stable thermal dome that resisted both heat loss and wind infiltration. Inside such a home, families experienced a consistent, quiet, draft-free environment, even in the midst of Arctic storms. During the 1930s and 40s, scientific interest in these methods re-emerged. Scandinavia and other European nations were working on Arctic military stations and cold-weather bunkers. Fuel was scarce due to war, and governments were desperate for designs that could remain warm with minimal heating. So researchers revisited the Viking turf systems, this time using instruments, smoke tests, and thermal measurements. Their findings shocked them. They discovered that homes built with Viking principles outperformed heated barracks that consumed tons of coal or oil. The ancient design was not just effective. It was superior to modern military shelters. This posed an unexpected dilemma. Buildings that could stay warm without fuel would profoundly reduce energy dependency. During wartime, this was a strategic advantage. During peacetime, it was an economic threat. Industries relying on selling heating systems, furnaces, fuel, and insulation materials had no interest in promoting a home that required none of those things. And so, while the military quietly documented the techniques in restricted civil defense papers, public builders were told that turf houses were unstable, outdated, or too labor-intensive for modern construction. University architecture programs ignored them. Government building codes didn't allow them and slowly the knowledge faded from mainstream use. Today, as people search for sustainable, off-grid living solutions, the Viking method looks revolutionary again. A partially earth-sheltered structure uses the natural temperature of the ground to stabilize the interior climate. Layered natural insulation traps heat better than many synthetic materials. Organic layers create automatic humidity control. A heavy roof stores heat and releases it evenly. And a few small vents ensure balanced airflow without any machinery. All of this can be done with local materials, simple tools, and a basic understanding of how heat moves. What makes this story so powerful is not just the technology itself, but the mindset behind it. The Vikings didn't approach construction by trying to shut nature out. They studied it, listened to it, and built homes that partnered with the environment. Instead of battling the Arctic, they used its principles, thermal mass, natural convection, layered insulation to create comfort with almost no energy cost. In a world facing rising energy prices, fragile utility systems, and growing interest in sustainable architecture, Sometimes the smartest ideas come from the past ideas refined by survival, observation, and deep respect for the land. The forgotten Viking home isn't just a relic. It's a blueprint for a future where buildings breathe, conserve energy, and work with nature instead of against it. If this exploration into ancient environmental engineering inspires you, stay tuned for more forgotten technologies and lost human solutions that once shaped the World proof that the past still holds answers for the problems we face today.